that controversy, the state vet says the feral feline population is a growing problem and that euthanasia should be part of the solution. Not everyone agrees. The feral cat problem is being solved by a number of organizations that catch, neuter, and release the animals. Feral cats being trapped and killed. The kitten had rabies, and before it died, it scratched or bit four or more people trying to rescue it. Imagine this. 40 million kittens will be born this year, but half of them will end up getting euthanized in shelters. Approximately 3.2 million cats enter the animal shelters in the U.S. Of these, about 530,000 cats are euthanized. Erased from this earth, a lost life, there are an estimated 58 million community cats in the U.S. For every female and male cat sterilized, up to 2,000 births of unwanted homeless kittens can be prevented over four years. And for that very reason, cat trappers like Sue dedicate themselves to the entire process of trap neuter release, better known as TNR. Do you know where they put that trap that that lady returned? Okay. Having the opportunity to experience what TNR is all about with Sue has given me new appreciation for those who work and especially volunteer in the cat rescue community. I'm looking forward to learning more about the process throughout my time here. The other wonderful thing at Good Muse that we do for our customers that trap on their own is we give them a little kit. This kit includes a piece of plastic, the paper boats, and a can of tuna, and some endless amounts of newspaper. This piece of plastic they can put inside their car, and then this newspaper will go on top. Then they're gonna set the cage on top of it. This helps protect their car from the cat going to the bathroom because a lot of times they're nervous and they're going to go to the bathroom. So by having the piece of plastic and then of course the newspaper on top of it, it prevents the pee from rolling off into the car and smelling up your car. Rescues like the good muse who have the resources by learning to trap themselves. Watching Sue take the time out to teach members of the community how to trap was very inspiring and it shows how dedication goes a long way. I'm going to go to the end here. Okay. Then I'm also going to give you some food boats. I'm going to set one right here. This carabiner. All right. Then you've got the big lever. So there's a lever here, and then there's this big lever. The big lever, as you can see, is what's lifting up the trip plate. So I always pull it up a couple times. And then you're going to set it like that. I'm going to scoop this back. Then with your tuna, you're gonna take a tiny piece and put a tiny piece right here. You can dribble the juice and then take another piece and put it at the end right here. Goody cat, I got your yummies. Goody cat. Not every cat that is trapped and fixed can be adoptable. Unfortunately, those who have been living in the wild long enough do not have the ability to transition into becoming domesticated. This I actually don't need. Newspaper there. We are finally packed and ready to go. The anticipation is setting in and I can't wait to witness the life of a cat trapper. With this film, I hope to inspire communities to get involved, either by donating, adopting, or even volunteering. The opportunity to do something is there. We're going up to Kennesaw that I have been trapping at trapped some last year and then again this year, probably over a hundred cats. Sadly, everybody wants to feed the cats, but nobody has taken the next step, which would be to trap, spay and neuter, and vaccinate and give them an ear tip. So I've been going out there quite a bit this year. It's been very devastating because probably even in the last three months, I, on the same couple roads, I've seen at least 10 different litters of kittens. And that's probably the hardest for me. It must be really tough to to uh, 
see kittens like that just just on the road and in the woods, wherever it is, right? It's yeah. just... Well, how do you cope seeing something like that? That's probably the most sensitive part about the job because it's kitten season and due to the fact that most rescues, most shelters are full right now. So sadly, it is just all about trapping them and spaying and neutering them, which is such a godsend that Good Muse has taken on this wonderful rescue and to be able to do this for all these community cats because then I can take them back to where they belong outside. Then they're gonna live a life much healthier. They will not get in fights if they're boy cats. They won't yowl, they won't spray. And the girls, of course, it will end this endless cycle of unwanted kittens. We're going to help out at one specific home and we're going to try to trap about three cats. There's still a mama cat, there's some kittens. I mean, I know there's boy cats. There, I mean, there's at least seven cats, but my goal today is to at least reach three because I know we're gonna go to another location. So our goal is to trap them so that tomorrow they can get spay or neutered, they can get their ear tipped, they'll get a little tattoo on their tummy, and the tattoo is just in case, even myself with as many cats that I trap all the time, sometimes you don't always catch the ear tip. So if that cat is trapped with an ear tip and it comes into good muse, and even say our surgery team by some crazy reason missed the ear tip, then after the cat is asleep, when they shave the tummy, they'll see a little tattoo, a little blue line, and they'll know hey, this cat's already had surgery, so they won't open up the cat again. So the cats get vaccinated, they'll get a rabies and a FVRCP shot, and all this also depends on the cat's age, For if they're young kittens. They'll get their ear tip, they get a cat star for fleas if needed. And the other wonderful thing that we do is if the cat has a wound, our surgery team and vets will look over the wound, they clean them up, and then they'll the cat will be released in a much better shape than it was. As we drove through the neighborhood, Sue pointed out areas where there were 20 or more community cats that had already gone through the TNR process. It was so difficult to drive by mobile homes and see so many cats living under them. As we drove past parked cars, you could see cats hiding by the tires. It was pretty clear to understand at this point that some areas or neighborhoods have a higher population of community cats. There is a lot of work that needs to be done. When we parked at the trapping point and I watched Sue prepare the traps with the food, I thought about all the cats she had already saved in the same neighborhood. Most people will think her work here is done, but the harsh reality is this issue with community cats will continue. Participation and cooperation are so vital trip plate and the bowl of goodies in the back and we're gonna cover this one up and pull it up I'll probably have to reset it when we get over there so what we do is we check our traps every half hour I never leave a trap the sad part about if you leave a trap or even leave it out overnight is you don't know what's gonna happen if it's in your own backyard possum or even a raccoon or a coyote could be walking by and it's gonna scare the cat even more or the cat could damage itself and hurt itself kitty, 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 because kitty, kitty, it's kitty, more scared. Kitty, kitty, kitty. As well as um, somebody taking the trap and doing harm to it. So I never ever leave a trap. Sue made her way up the steps to set up a trap. Suddenly, I noticed three to four cats run away. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good enough look to notice an ear tip. You just saw three cats, right? They're like three kittens, I mean? The little white one has already been trapped. I trapped him last week. Okay. So he's smart. <laughs> but we'll set this back up over here and see. I'll put one on the deck and one over here in the, let's see. Nope, you know what? I'm gonna set it over here. Setting traps at certain locations with a specific cat in mind at times does work. 
but what about new cats that have made that same location their new home? Being prepared for the unpredictable is so important. I'm like going, I think I'm gonna try this too. Deciding on the best trap to use can take a minute. With experience and clearly a lot of patience, especially in this heat, being able to trap at least one cat is still a success. The cycle is never ending and watching just one person do it all is exhausting on his own. I can't imagine what it feels like to repeat this process daily. And even though I'm here filming, I'm not physically doing the work like Sue. I now see how important it is to have the right people be a part of TNR because it's not as easy as just setting a trap. I've never seen a cat trap this big. This is pretty cool. You can get multiple cats in here. This is called a drop trap. This is really good for catching kittens and stubborn cats that won't go into a, a regular trap. So if you think Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote back in the day with the stick and you pull it. But, so this goes way back here. Whoops. So this is where your good eyesight comes into play. And I'm gonna get another trap over there still to hold it down to weight it. And then you, and I'm gonna hang out over here, but I gotta get a, a trap. Sometimes we use catnip just to sprinkle around a tiny bit. That sometimes entices some of the big males to go in. But it also has backfired and I've had them roll around on the outside of the cage. <laughs> so it just depends on the guy. And then there's a mom over there right now that I haven't got. I'm hoping maybe she'll go under the drop down. Our goal is to trap mama cat that happens to live under the mobile home. Mama cats tend to suffer most due to the constant cycle of reproduction and caring her best for each litter. If we can trap her, we can keep her from having to endure years of excessive breeding. The other thing you have to remember to do is to remember where you set your traps and it's always so that you don't ever leave a trap. That would be so, so bad. So I always count my traps and keep track of how many that I set out. Because it would be horrible to leave a, a trap set and you leave and then that poor cat's in a trap till who knows when. Because people have told me before that they found cats and traps that people have forgotten about. Not us. But I'm gonna sit it there and hoping our little friend will come around that way. Since he seems a little, little more skittish. The biggest trap was set, now we wait. If it were me trapping, I'll probably be counting how many traps I set up so I won't forget. Instead, we were just waiting and watching. It felt like we were out fishing and waiting on a bite. Except this line was a lot heavier. Some curiosity because the one of the kittens is either, I, I can't tell whether it was really excited about my cord okay. because it, its eyes lit up a minute ago when I pulled the, was pulling on the cord because it's hiding out over there or if it's just smelling the tuna at the trap right here, the little kitten trap. Right. So it could be either one. So it's just all about patience. And then I was hoping with the drop trap, if one went in, then maybe another will follow. That's what's so great about the drop trap because you can possibly get three, four, five kittens under it at one time and then boom, you're done. <laughs> Trap. Yep, we got one. So it was that simple. We got this little one, and she's that's why we cover it up to keep him calm. And then I use this extra carabiner, and I'll come down here, and where these little rings are, I hook it just for safety so the kitten doesn't get out or the cat. But here's our baby and it hasn't been ear tipped. So we'll get fixed tomorrow and then I'll bring you back on Tuesday. Yeah. Wow, that is so awesome. 
So one down. going in there you're just desperately hungry? Yes, because what I asked the feeders to do or the caregivers, they were told not to feed last night and not to feed this morning so that the kittens or the cat, the mamas are less hungry and they'll go in the trap for food. Wow, and this is what you do all the time? <laughs> yes. Actually, I love this part. Yeah, hey, you're so- I really do. Like this seriously, you're so awesome. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. It's fun, it makes you feel really good because you know this, whether, which you can't tell, I can't tell from here, but the whether adrenaline. it's a little boy or a little girl, but we know now this one will be fixed and won't have any more babies. And if it's a little boy, can't make them or won't get any fights and he won't get beat up. So you're gonna have a much better life. Thanks to good muse, sweet thing. Wow, this is the adrenaline in this is crazy. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> All right, so that one's okay for a few minutes. I've never seen anything like this. The trapping, the patience, it's like, wow, and I'm here doing it. I'm excited about it. I've never seen anything like that. It's what we do all the time to help better the lives of the cats here in Cobb County. And good news, is taking care as best as we can the feral cat community. It helps if I have people willing to trap. I can educate the community about it. So if we can't get to you, I can teach you everything you need to know about helping the kitties in your community. And you can bring them to Good Muse and we will spay and neuter them and give them vaccinations. And it's just gonna make their lives much healthier. And as a caregiver or a feeder, you're gonna have less kitties to feed. Because I'm not going to pull it until the gray, if the gray one goes in. Now it's time for the drop trap to work its magic. The first cat that found the trap has already been TNR'd. So today he gets a meal that won't cost him a thing. Who we really want to trap is making his way to the tuna. If we are fast enough, we can save him too. It looks like he's trying to figure out how to make his way in. After pulling the cord, we realized it broke off, but that didn't stop the trap from working. He was surely scared and doing his best to break free. Being able to cover the cage really does help reduce the stress. It's not exciting to watch a cat behave this way after being trapped, but it would be much better off after the process. I'm gonna grab a transfer cage, then I don't waste my traps. <laughs> She's little enough. All right. Hey, little sweet baby. Hey, little sweet baby, you're okay. Yeah, she's okay. All right. What, on this side of the drop trap, there are four carabiners. So the ones closest hook up to the transfer cage. So there's one that holds the top down, and then the closest one holds the transfer cage. So that if you have a really crazy cat, then um, it's gonna hold it and it won't move. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up this part because most kitties are gonna go and wanna go where it's darker. So then I'm gonna, there we go. Come here, baby. Yep, come on. Come on, I'm barely tapping you. Go in there. So we got two kittens. We just now need to get another mom to stop the reproduction. This kitten will be fixed and be returned. And the reason this little kitten is getting returned is because from looking at it, it's over 12 weeks, 12 weeks or older, and they're harder to socialize. So this kitty will get returned back to his community where he knows its surroundings, knows its feeders, knows where to hide from predators, from storms. It's gonna be quite happy Foster this kitty would take a lot more time on the foster where 
As we drive around in here, you're gonna see kittens of all ages. And the younger a kitten is, the easier it is to socialize. So that's why usually around the three month period, we say we need to release them back into the community. Hey buddy, I'm gonna put you back here with your friend. And I'm also gonna turn my van on just cause it's getting a little sticky. Put you just like that and you can see your buddy. I just like to do that. <laughs> just hopefully it calms them down a little bit, seeing their best friend in there with them. I'm gonna start. We have another cat. This is, a, I believe, a young boy that I tried to trap the other day and for whatever reason, my trap did not trigger. And he filled himself up with lots of tuna. But now, calm down, buddy. Yeah. Oh, wow. But a little this, bigger. Yeah. So we want to, he's going to get fixed. But he hangs out because I know he hangs out at the shed next door. So he's been around for a while. It was pretty sad to see the reaction of this cat after it was trapped, knowing that in a few days it will be better protected and it won't add the overpopulation of community cats. Makes us feel a whole lot better. Hang on. Hang on, buddy. Being able to trap this male cat, who is obviously older than most cats we have trapped, is a great relief. He will be fixed and won't contribute adding any more litters to this neighborhood. One cat truly does make a huge difference. I'm gonna sit you right here where you got a little more room. Here we go. Three. Oh wow, he's in there, he's in or there. Or actually that's number four. Number four, yes. Yeah. And I feel better because this was another kitten of this litter. So I think I've caught all of them for this litter. So it's always good. A, it makes it easier to trap this one, not having to worry about it. Let's see your little face. Let's see your little face. That's a really beautiful one too. Yeah, you're another little, whoa, whoa. baby. Whoa, baby, whoa, baby. Let's calm you down. Let's calm you down. What's funny is this little white one that I said I already got. Right. He was watching everything and eating all my goodies last time, or the time before I trapped him. He's smart now, he hasn't come out. <laughs> Hi, baby. Look at that hissy face. Look at the, the ears flat. That's how you know it's definitely a little feral kitten. It's not, it's not a welcoming cat. No, flat ears. This cat, was born outside. So this is a this is a true feral. A true feral is a cat that's been born outside that's unsocialized. A stray could be somebody's pet cat that somebody dumped or they moved and just left it and they've somewhat socialized. All safe. <laughs> we were able to trap more than two community cats in one day. I've already learned so much in such little time. This experience has provided me with the knowledge I can now share. When Sue talked about how she would love to educate more community members on TNR, she meant it. What one person can learn in one day alone is amazing. Not to mention can be beneficial to your community. As we drove away, Sue decided to make one more stop. I had no idea where our next stop would be, but after stopping and watching Sue walk out, I wasn't surprised she had her very own fan club. All of these guys have been, ooh, that one has not, yes she has. These guys have all been ear tipped, this whole little crew. Hey babies, hey babies, are you guys hungry? You want some yummies? Got one up on top. Hi. My daughter snagged a sibling to this one and it has it at her house right now. Hey guys, are you guys hungry? Come here. I know you guys are hungry. Let me get you some yummies. So 
I always check this whole crew. See that gray one right there that's striped, that gray tabby? I have one of her kittens. It's the friendliest kitten. I'm hoping Heather's gonna take her. Her name's Cora. That's Cora's mom. I know, are you guys hungry? Let's come over here and I'll see what kind of yummies you have. Come over here. Yeah, let's see what yummies you have. Hey guys, come on. Come here, who wants some yummies? Yeah, who wants some yummies? Hold on. Let's see, we probably got I tell feeders really to feed it in the back of the house so that it doesn't draw attention to the neighbors that don't like the cats. Hey girls, you want some tuna? Hmm? You want some tuna? Yeah. But this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve right here that have been fixed. As I sat there, the urge to say something about what I was witnessing quickly went away. I was overwhelmed with emotion and the words couldn't make their way out. I'm so thankful to Sue for allowing me to come along with her and capture her efforts. Her role is so crucial and the community she serves are so fortunate to have her. Always got to watch too because I don't want them underneath my van. Y'all okay? Kitty's okay? Good. Did a bunch of cats for that family. We finally arrived back at Good Muse after a long day of cat trapping. Now the intake process begins. The cats are weighed and photographed, then set down until the next morning. Surgery will begin at about 8.30 a.m. This little baby is all set too for surgery tomorrow. Because it's still early, I can still give these guys some food, too, before they're surgery. Hot! Don't freak out! So uh, we're just looking for all the forms. We're looking through all the emails, seeing who's bringing their cats today. So we're just prepping to make sure that we have all the right information before they drop off. Now it's just time for all the cats to roll in. Watching the medical team carry in not only the cats trapped by Sue the day before, but trap cats by other organizations display the perfect example of the saying, it takes a village. I am with Kudzu Cat Alliance and we are a Cobb County uh, TNR trap neuter return organization. We were founded about two years ago and I had been trapping on my own for about a year before that probably just finding some kittens in my neighborhood in the course of trapping them, realizing that there were all these stray cats at this apartment complex at the top of my street. So I started getting them fixed so there wouldn't be more kittens because when I see kittens, I have to take them home with me. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be able to do this without Good Muse and let them provide these surgeries at no cost to us. Um, you know, I think that's a really key part of this. A lot of the people who end up feeding these colonies of cats um, tend to, you know, often are low income themselves. They're living in apartment complexes and trailer parks and they're, you know, oftentimes caring for ever growing colonies and, you know, feeding the cats before they're feeding themselves. And 
without good muse and with you know the support of all the people in the community who donate and help us you know provide these veterinary cares and you know traps and foods and all the things that we you know have to have in order to keep doing this you know we wouldn't be able to do it this is sterile water that goes into the vaccines it's just one part of the FERCP what are you doing here what are you looking for? So he has an ear tip. Uh, that's one way that we tell that we've already spayed or neutered them. Um, so he was basically trapped by mistake without the trapper noticing that that left ear has a... Oh, he, he or she didn't realize that it was already neutered yep. or spayed, right? Yeah. Yep. So we'll return this one to the trapper. Um, no surgery, obviously, because it doesn't need it again. Um, this happens sometimes. I'd say maybe about once a week we'll find one that's already been spayed or neutered, already has that ear tip on there. Well, that's a good thing, right? It is, yeah. It means what we're doing is working. It's making a difference out in the community. Last year, our goal was to perform 2,000 surgeries, um, spays and neuters within our CAT program, whether it be rescues or com the community CAT program. And so um, this year, actually, we should surpass that goal of 2,000 today um, and going towards our goal of 3,000 spays and neuters for the year. It looks like we should actually hopefully meet that mark by the end of uh, 2021. And last week was pretty amazing too. We actually did 100 spays and neuters in one week. So it's been a, a pretty amazing year so far. Caring for the cat's trap before, during, and after the surgery is an act that doesn't go unseen. The cats are placed in a dark room to keep them calm and ease their anxiety being that they are in an unfamiliar stressful environment. Because the cats aren't given a complete and full physical, double checking for issues and going over notes is very important. So this is prep. This is where the cats first come out. Um, we will go ahead and put a mask on them, do their eye loop, hook them up to the oxygen and anesthesia. Uh, we always make sure that they don't have a microchip. Um, and we'll go ahead and do their little ear tips so way everybody knows that they've been altered um, and just shave and get them ready for surgery. Uh, hooking her up to the mask and then hooking her up to oxygen and uh, gas anesthesia. And then we're gonna begin shaving her. We already scanned her for the microchip and gave her eye lube. And then we do always mark their ear with a permanent marker just to make sure that they do not get put back in the wrong trap, just as an extra safety measure. Something that stood out to me the most was just how organized and structured this operating room was. Watching the medical team operate so confidently in unison was such a great moment to be a part of. Whoever was working on cats showed love and passion. Knowing that these cats, the cats before and so many after, received the best care is what rescue is all about. Learning more about the preparation prior to surgery helped me get a better understanding of the small details that make a huge difference. The importance of choosing the right team that not only works well together, but the ones that show the same amount of compassion and dedication towards the cats that they save is so easily displayed here at Good Muse. It's no surprise that they are able to accomplish so many spay and neuter surgeries throughout the weeks. Although they may never have human contact again, it's a great feeling to know that because of TNR, their chances of living a safer and healthier life are now a lot higher. This is a male cat. Uh, one
one thing that we like to do for all of the ferals is express their bladder. For female cats, it does affect uh, how well the veterinarian can get in and do the surgery. For male cats, we do it more as a courtesy because sometimes they're just in the trap for a while. Um, sometimes we can't return them until the following day. Um, so we just don't want them to have to hold it for too long. So after we shave, we do express the bladder just to make it more comfortable. We're just getting her ready for surgery, putting in the eye lube so the eyes don't get dried out with the mask and anesthesia. Uh, scanning for the microchip as always before we proceed. We have aged her by her teeth because she has uh, her upper canines coming in. That means she's about six months old. So here I'm gonna make a small incision just through the surface of the skin and I'm gonna open it up so that I can put a little bit of ink which is back here, sorry about that. There's some ink on the back of my surgical blade and I'm gonna apply it to the skin right here. And then I'm gonna take the glue and I'm gonna glue that area. So now that there's a permanent tattoo here showing that this cat has been spayed. Just like that. Well, tell me what just happened. Okay, we put styptic on the ear tip cut, and sometimes they bleed a little bit, at which point we apply pressure. If pressure doesn't stop the bleeding, I simply take a little bit more of the styptic gel, put it on the gauze, and apply it with pressure. All right, here we've got subcutaneous fluids going under the skin and we wait for like a little bit of a ball and that helps them get hydrated after surgery. Seeing the cats get hugged for the first time and more than likely the last time was really sad. Pretty girl, sweet dreams. Is there any way you can domesticate a feral cat? Yes. Is that possible? Um, we've had it takes one. a very long time. It can take a long time. Um, and sometimes it never happens. Yes but it really depends on the cat. Uh, it's usually, usually once they're about, what is it? 10, oh. 10, 12 weeks old, it becomes much more difficult yeah. to socialize them. I, mean, I took one home from here that was 10 weeks old and he was very shy. Now he's over a year old and he's a lap cat and loves people. But when I first brought him home, he was pretty shy and took some time working with him, but it was, He's a lap cat now. Yeah, I took three home from here about two weeks ago and they're just now starting to let me pet them. So it's a process. Our community cat program serves all of Cobb County by offering free sterilization and vaccination of community cats. This is especially beneficial to underserved communities where there is such a large feral and stray population. The purpose of our community cat program is to combat the overpopulation and quick reproduction of cats out in society. Okay, so what is a community cat? So a community cat can be either a feral or a stray cat who makes their home outdoors. And a feral cat is one that is not socialized to humans in the least. You cannot approach it, can't touch it, can't really interact with it. And a socialized stray cat may be friendly, but may still not be suitable for indoor life and prefer to make the outdoors its home. And this way, with the program that we offer, it allows that animal to at least have a chance at life rather than be euthanized. Our community cat program was born from both need and opportunity. We have a beautiful state-of-the-art surgical suite that at the time was only in use three days a week. So we had a couple of extra days that we could put in there to utilize that. At the time, Best Friends Animal Society was managing the community cat program for Cobb County. 
And because it is not their general practice to manage programs on, a, on an ongoing basis and long term, they needed some capable hands to pass it off to, and we were the clear answer. Knowing this, I approached them. We started those discussions. I was able to secure the funding to get the program off the ground and running, and the rest, they say, is history. So, of course, we still need ongoing funding for this program because each spay and neuter, along with vaccinations, cost approximately $50 per cat. And this is a service that we offer to particularly underserved communities that are not able to afford this. But it is a massive help to the community at large. It saves the lives of cats and it also improves the lives of humans. That number is only growing as our processes and efficiencies are improved. And what we were able to do additionally, not only for the community that you see, but also behind the scenes for Cobb County Animal Services, is we are able to divert intake of feral and stray homeless cats to our center to be sterilized, vaccinated, and return to their homes so that they never enter an animal control facility. And what this means is that Cobb County Animal Services is able to keep their euthanizations down, reaching no kill status for themselves, as well as making more room for lost and adoptable pets. So we are releasing what you caught yes. on Sunday. Correct when we were trapping. But they're gonna get a good meal first before they get released. Because you never know how soon they're gonna get, go back to their caregiver and get more food. Provided all of them have caregivers. After the cat's food is prepared, Sue covers them back up in their traps to make it more comfortable for them to eat. Once the cats finish their meals, we take one more final look and Sue points out the ear tip on one of the cats, which is subtle, but just enough to notice. They will soon be on their way back to their outdoor home, but this time much healthier and in better condition than when they arrived. The time has come to gather every cat and release them. This is the part of TNR that I have been excited and also sad about. So much time, preparation, and love goes into this process. Having the opportunity while observing Sue along with the medical team has not only taught me about TNR, but it has made me more understanding. I am hopeful now every time I see a feral or a community cat, knowing that there are people who are doing what they can to trap, feed, and basically care for these cats however they can gives me a better perspective. Here, so I'm gonna head your way. It's saying I should be there in about 11 minutes. So um, I'll be returning little Minnie and the other little black and white kitty. Yeah, okay. Well, Chester will be happy to see little Minnie. Oh, great. She's, she's his friend. Oh. And I have a check for you, so if you come to the door or something. Perfect. I will come to the door and because I'll bring you that little feral house and you can decide if you guys want to use it or if your husband ends up wanting to make a little bit bigger one. But we'll be there at about 310 roughly. All right? All right. Perfect. Thank you. The plan is we're going to get to go return to field, which is RTF. A couple kitties that were fixed yesterday. So they get to go back to their homes. And I've got a couple caregivers that are very excited that their kitties are coming back. You're good over here. At the light, turn left onto Roswell Road. Okay. We've got down This is the most exciting part, is releasing them. You hear that? You say, we want to go home. Meow. 
so I've got to give her paperwork and then I have to give her her feral house for her kitty. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the paperwork first on both of them. So the little girl, they're showing yeah. she's gray here, female. Oh, so you, you feel can, like she's four years old? The vets determine that by their teeth. So, mm -hmm. you know, give or take a year. Yes. But this will, her paperwork, so it'll say here she's sterilized on 816. She got her rabies shot, so she's vaccinated here. And she also got her B, um, FERCP shot. And then it says she's ear tipped, tattooed, scanned for microchip, none was found. We put some frontline on her, which is the flea medication. So she'll have that. Oh, Fluids okay. are automatically given. Okay. This is the paperwork just on the black and white one. Um, they didn't give the FBRCP. They went ahead and gave it another rabies shot. It's just black and white. Obviously, she... Um, do, 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 do. Um, I know she wasn't sterilized, so because she was already spayed. Yeah, tattoo present. So that's, that's she's not. Yes, yeah, so she's not sterilized. So that's incorrect. But um, that's this. I and don't then, understand people um, microchipping and not putting their address on there. Well, when the cat, when they got it from a rescue, the cat. They give them the information because the cat was already microchipped and they're supposed to go home and then on their computers, they update the information by putting their name, their address, phone number, so that just like what happened, if the cat gets brought in to a rescue or a vet, then they scan it, they get the microchip number, and you hope then that that person will answer the phone and come get their cat. Yeah, but, well, so, I'm I, who I'm knows? But, well, we're happy oh, to give you oh, a well, check. You're so sweet. Thank you. Now this, this is a little, so I don't know how big. I've never seen Chester, but uh -huh. he can crawl in. He's got an inside and an out, an exit. And oh, I put, so this yeah. is wheat straw. And then it, that's oh, okay. that's how it looks on the inside. So, um, and I, if you'd like, in case you think your husband wants to actually make one out of that bigger one. I can give you some wheat straw if you would like it. You can give me some what? Some extra wheat straw. Okay. okay. So here's this, this is an extra bag of some wheat straw. So if you want to keep that inside, it yeah. might be better. Do you want me to carry this around to the back for you? Um, well, Bill can do it. But Are you sure? Um, it's okay what what it? I would like to do, let's, if we could put that. I'd yeah. like to show you a picture of Chester. Oh, okay. And I think you can tell that his ear is flat. Okay. Let me see. Oh yeah, I can see that very easily. Just, oh, he's handsome. So I can I, feel like he, he's fixed. Yeah, right? yeah, he's fixed. You can see his little ear tip on there. So somebody has kindly been how nice! He's sleeping under the table right now. Is he? Yeah. Well, I will walk around and probably write. Does it matter where I release Minnie to you? She gonna, she's gonna run, and you have to keep in mind that she might even. Kitty. Now, so you can see the ear tip. Would would it be uh, would it be good to leave her out by Chester because well, they're good friends? We can if you want. See, now you see her ear tip, it's really thin. Yeah, that's very little. Yeah, I can let you walk in. You sure? I'd be happy for you to see Chester. Okay. I think she would like to. Okay, well, she's probably, or I can walk around. She's probably going to end up running it. So yeah, she probably will. I'm but just warning you. You're welcome to come in too if you like. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, he is laying right there. Okay. There. Okay. He might get up one way. Yeah, open the door. Yeah. Then I'll talk to him. Well, you can see him so sweet. Yeah, well, what we can do. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'm gonna do it just like that. Yeah. Hi, hey, Chester. Here's your friend. There you go, honey. Sweet girl, you get to go. Go on. And that's how it's done. Cool. We 
let her go. And I've got you that little, I've made a little house. You can determine if you want to, you know, make a bigger one. Do you want me to set it in the back for you? She gave us a nice turn. Do you want me to set it in the back for you? You could. Okay, yeah, I guess. Okay, let him get used to it. But this will help keep him, hopefully, warmer in the winter. And it'll give him time, too, to get used to it. And he can decide if he wants to go in or out of it. All right, that's good. You can do anything you want to with that. All right, yeah. We'll scoot it over like that. Yeah. That'd be nice. You know what? He might even lay on it. <laughs> Chester, you're handsome. You're a handsome devil. Yes, you are. Look at that dapper guy. Yeah, we like him. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I thought he was orange and white. Yeah. He's gorgeous. He's really nice. Yeah. And so we gave her a little ear tip, but she was already. So, yeah, the other one. Yeah, well, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go release her over there since we caught her um, over that side. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just going to the end of the driveway over here because I don't know where this cat is traveling from. See, poor Minnie, when I saw her, Minnie was coming out of the... As we walked over to the next release location, Sue pointed out a drainage where she was able to save a cat from. I was able to get close enough and clearly the living space was barely enough for comfort. I couldn't imagine two or three cats making it a home. People call us now that they know to call yeah. us, but we also love the fact that you're compassionate enough to feed them. Yeah. You know, and put water out, especially as hot as our Georgia oh, summers. It's been terrible. We were able to successfully release the cats at our first location. They all found their way back and will continue to be fed by the community they live in. Let you go. 
Sue set a few cats down and prepared the traps to release the cats all at once. Capturing the release of each cat was important for me to film and share. I wanted everyone to see these cats run back to their familiar place where they feel safe. After opening the traps, you can notice their hesitance to run away, then quickly the shift where they felt comfortable enough to make their way back. so feral you're shaking like a leaf. Hi hey, buddy. You got fleas on you too. Okay. So here's his little ear tip. I'll let him go. Fine mom. Go that way. Wow, interesting. Sad. Sad. Sad because they have to, they don't have a home, but at the same time, they do have a home. They have their outdoor home and they've got their feeders. Once again, their mom's underneath there and no more babies. So it is a win win. I can see it in your eyes. You just don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful thing what you're doing though. Really proud of you. Well, thank you. Not long ago you got hurt, someone did you wrong. I can see it in your eyes, it's like your fire is gone. Across your face, it is written across your face If you want to talk, I'm right here, not gonna leave your side Just feel free to open up when the moment's right Across your face, it is written across your face If you want to go out, we can go out You can hide away just for one night But if you want to cry, just let it out I'm by your side Take your pain away Cause I hate seeing tears streaming down your face I know you're strong Won't feel this way for long, no If you wanna go out, we can go out We can hide away just for one night But if you wanna cry, just let it out I'm by your side Just for one night